In the time stepping loop, we want to update the psi hyxs in the PML. Looking at the bottom diagram of this slide, which corresponds to the two dimensional grid, to update the hy's, we need four loops that integrate over for k equals 1 to k max minus 1, all the hy's in the k direction, and for i equals i max minus PML because that's the first HY that has, that's inside the PML. And to I max minus one, since that's the last HY that has a PML update. In these spatial loops, we want to update the psi HY X's, but the I's in this for loop iterate from I max PML to I max minus one. Whereas our psi HY X matrix, as we defined it earlier, follows the indices of the 1D PML, as shown on the top part of the slide. It goes from 1 to PML. So we don't want to just write psi h y x i comma k, because this will call on i values that are outside of the range of our psi h y x matrix. Instead, we need to now figure out how to call on the psi hyxs and bhs and chs in reverse order on the right side of our grid so that we have a mirror image of the PML we defined on the left side of our one-dimensional grid. The best way to figure out how to do this is to test some values. So I'm going to put an x here through that because we're not going to use that. So when i is equal to, right here, when i is equal to i max minus PML, so that's the first value as we're cycling through the I's, we want to call on the I equals PML value. So when we're starting right here, we're at this location, we want to use the value of psi HYX that is at right here at PML. And the I equals PML value of the BH and CH arrays as well. We can accomplish this if we use i max minus i. So one possibility here is we have hyx, and instead of i, I'm going to put i max minus i, and then I'll have k. k is not an issue. So now, if we have i max minus i, when i is equal to i max minus pml, i max minus i, this is going to be equal to PML, which is the value that we want from the one dimensional, the left hand side. Now we can check the ending i index. So when we, when i is equal to i max minus one, the last index, we want to call, let's see, that is when we are right here, i max minus i. So when we are updating this value, we want to call on values that are over he here, right next to the PML. We want a value of 1, and a value of 1 in the BH and CH arrays. So do we get a value of 1 if we plug in I max minus I? So let's see, when I is equal to I max minus 1, if we plug in I max minus I, we get I max minus I max minus 1, which is equal to 1. So this means that we have successfully reversed and called on the correct components in this updating loop if, so right here, we would write psi hyx, instead of i comma k, we're going to have i max minus i comma k, and then we'll be able to call on the correct index in the psi array. So now we can update the psi hyx's using for k equals 1 to k max minus 1, and for i equals i max minus pml to i max minus 1. These are the indices for the right side of the grid.
And we're going to call on psi is something we have defined on the left side of our grid. So this we use i max minus i comma k. And that's equal to bh. I'm following this equation right here. We have bh. This is also defined on the left side of our grid. So we have here i max minus i. And we need to multiply this times psi h y x, the, pre the value that's already in our psi array, that's at the same location, so i max minus i comma k, plus ch, that's also defined on the left side of our grid, i max minus i, times, now, now we have e z. So we want to call on the e z components that are on the right side of our grid in the PML. So we're going to use just the regular i, i plus 1 comma k because these indices that we're looping through are for the right side of our grid and this is e z i comma k and the last thing we need to do is implement this psi in the hy updates what's the best way to do this well think of how you implemented the soft source in your one dimensional model if we update the psi hyx's immediately after the regular hy update, then we are ready to just add on that extra psi term, this one right here. In the same spatial loops we use to update the psi hyx's. So in other words, in the same loop, this would be after, you know, up here we have the regular hy updates across the whole grid, including the PML region. After that, just like before you implemented your soft source by tacking on an extra term, now in this for loop, we're going to tack on the extra term to our hy's. So we'd have hy i comma k, and we have i because i's are already looping through the indices on the right side of our grid. And that's going to be equal to the hy that's already there from our regular update, plus db, we have db here, multiplied times delta, that delta gets rid of the delta in the db coefficient, times psi. So psi hyx, now remember psi is a PML a matrix that we had defined on the left side of our grid, on the size on the left side of our grid. So this is going to have i max minus i comma k. And now we can close these for loops. So this is all we need to implement to have the PML updates on the hy components in our grid. So putting all this together, this is what I had on the previous slide. And this is just rewritten nice and clean so you can see it better. This should be implemented immediately after the regular HY updates and before any E updates, since the electric fields call on magnetic fields in the update equations. Go ahead and implement both the psi EZX and the psi HYX updates in your model. When you create loops for the psi EZX updates, which we haven't done yet, we just did the HY updates, then use the one-dimensional and the two-dimensional PML diagrams with the indices labeled uh, in order to make sure you're calling on the correct indices because you won't be able to use i max minus i. It'll be slightly shifted since the uh, field components are offset by half of a cell.